Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Tom Wells here. Today is Friday, February the 16th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, your first daily dose of happy for the day. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you've had a good week, uh, especially if you're uh, in the workforce and and, uh, you're saying, yep, TGIF, glad the weekend is here. Uh, There are some people who are more glad than others and some people who are less glad than others about this weekend here in Connecticut, Tom, because we have another snowstorm uh, scheduled for Saturday night, Sunday morning. We're expecting about 48 inches, so... Uh, my oh. wife is celebrating, and, and the neighbors who uh, commute are, are crying. It just depends on your viewpoint. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I would love to see more snow here still. Well, we got we got about an inch the other day, which was amazing. Um, so I don't know. We've had like six or eight inches so far the whole winter, maybe. <laughs> it, it, that's pretty unusual for Boulder and Denver, Colorado. That's that's really it is. quite low. It is. Yeah, it's very low. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, you know. but we still could get more. So you, you still could. Usually March or April are our biggest months of moisture. So. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we got all of March to come. We're not even done with February yet. So yeah. all kinds of things can happen. There's no doubt That's about right. that. That's right. And they have many times. <laughs> I'm sure they have, yes. <laughs> Probably in honor of the, of the Winter Olympics. That's what it is, because the Olympics are going on over in Korea right now, right? Exactly, so, yeah. You know, yeah. So, so Denver's been waiting like, okay, once we get the ski events done in Korea, then we can snow. <laughs> because <then laughs> Yeah, they're sending all the, all the good energy over there. <laughs> that's right, yes. Yeah. Right, as if there was not enough, you know, abundance of, uh, of energy. Yeah, but, right. <laughs> you know, that's what we think a lot. It is. And... uh it's one of the reasons we're doing the topic today because energy really starts from within. And so if you want to tap into the within, of course, you have to love yourself because love is the highest level of energy. So when you're, when you're loving yourself, essentially, you're letting the energy flow. And that's what we want. We want the energy to flow. We want the energy to flow into our lives and feel good and, you know, have a great time and so forth. Well, we got to start with the self love. So this is a good topic. I'm, I'm glad that uh, you picked this one out for today. Yeah, it's uh, I like I say every topic I pick it's because something's up for me around that topic and this <laughs> one I was, was asking myself this week, well what what's really up for me? And I said, well it's it I think it's the way that I perceive my own love of myself in relationship to others. Um cuz you know, I go out and I do different things, went to dinner at somebody's house, go to my tai chi classes, my comedy improv classes and when I do, I have interactions with people and I was seeing how how come I have this thing where I think so much that my self love depends on what other people think of, think of me? And mm. because, you know, I, I guess it was just this big realization because I happened to listen to this segment of Abraham on self love that they point, they were pointing out that it's the essence of self love. And the reason we don't have enough self love sometimes and we get stuck in not getting what we want in our lives, literally, because it all begins with self-love. And yet we evaluate our love for ourselves based on how much somebody else is loving us or other people are loving us. And when we feel like I don't have enough love from that person, I don't have enough love from that person, that person doesn't like me enough, then we use that as 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 an evaluation of ourselves. And then we start lowering our self-love based on the degree that we don't feel enough loved. And it was fascinating to realize, oh, it all began with our mother and father, you know, especially our mother, because mothers have this ability to shower a flood of genuine love on their baby, you know, on their young child. And that really, you know, implants this strong message in us that, that that feels good, right? It feels really good to have mm-hmm. love fl- float at us. The same as when you have a lover, you know, and if that lover is being really wonderful to us, then we feel fantastic, you know. But s- what we've done a lot in our lives is we've made that external love coming, flowing to us, the thing that then we go and look for. <laughs> and w- then we expect, you know, if we're at work or, or we're in friendships, wherever we are, there's Part of us is expecting that we want to be loved by other people. And Abraham was saying the whole name of the game is to turn that around to where you're the one that's flowing love through you because it's, it's who you really are anyway. And so it's your fascination and appreciation with others 
and with other things in your life, not just with other people, but with, wow, that's a beautiful rug. I love that rug. I'm so glad I've got that rug in my living room, you know, or, oh, my God, you know, I'm so grateful my body is feeling so good and I can dance like this, or I'm so Mm -hmm. grateful to have this meal. Man, this is, I love this pasta. It's so good. And if we get into flowing love all the time towards everything, then that's the key to us loving ourselves. In in other words, that is self-love is love flowing through us is what they're saying. And it's us flowing the love out that is actually how we get our own connection that we're really needing. And we can never get it by expecting that others are going to love us enough because others aren't dependable. They're, they're always taking care of themselves and other things that they're focused on. We can't, we can't rely on them to always be focused on us. You know, um, that's probably what happens in relationships a lot. You know, you want that other person to love you so much, but that can't be the source of your love. It just can't be. You know? Very true. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, the, the whole idea of self-love really touches on something that I, always struck me as, as being, I guess, representative of, what happens when we come into physical existence? Because from the moment that we have our earliest conscious memories, we are really completely aware and completely focused on what goes on in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And the world is, in this sense, outside of ourselves. We think of it as outside of ourselves. In fact, we rarely think about what's going on inside. Some of us have pretty good connections still. Um, particularly if we're really young, then the connection is still fairly, fairly recent, so we're we're familiar with reaching inside and connecting inside. But as we get older, that connection seems to fade a little bit because we get so reliant on this outside world. So then it's not terribly surprising. You know, like you said, we, we look outside ourselves for love. We look outside of ourselves for success. We look outside of ourselves for everything in life, mm-hmm. not realizing mm-hmm. that we've just reversed the formula. <laughs> mm-hmm. It actually mm-hmm. has to start inside first. So, and, and it's just a fascinating thing to me, the fact that we, we are so heavily focused and attached to this physical world that we forget where the connection is. Yeah, it, it, it really is like turning in a complete paradigm shift. For me, I, I, I was so, um, grateful that in the last two days of just working on this topic a little bit and looking into it to have that realization, um, that, oh, you know, that's what I'm doing when I'm feeling like I'm not accomplishing the degree of self-love that I want or the degree of enjoyment of my life that I want, I'm comparing myself. They say that's the biggest thing that causes self-love to deteriorate is, is that we compare ourselves to others or we look for love from others, you know, that we, that <laughs> it's just literally, um, also that, you know, that those things we do, like, because I, I realize I also do that comparing myself. You know, it's almost like subtle, not even noticing that I'm doing it, how often maybe I'm comparing, you know, my financial situation, my car, my my um, age, my appearance, my clothing. Um, so many things. It's so easy to be evaluating my self-worth based on how I compare to others. And what, and a lot of that is imagined comparisons. You know, we're imagining what we think is going on with others, whereas that might not be what's going on with the other person at all. You know, we're imagining even what they think of us, whereas they, they might be thinking about other things entirely. And so to pull our attention out of all that and get it focused on us appreciating, and they said literally we need to do it thought by thought, experience by experience, conversation by conversation, memory by memory, that it's all our relationships in us. You know, like that if we're in every conversation, every memory, every at at feeling good inside of ourselves, making the choice that I'm going to feel good and that all my self-love and all my happiness simply depends on me feeling good about my life. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. it. You know, and then everything can flow to us because then that's how source always feels about us. Source is always showering love on us. And in a way, that's why our, our emotions get, we get bad. We get negative emotion because 
is just the contrast between what we're thinking about our own life and how source views our life. Source is always viewing our life as an absolute wonderful success. And we're not always. So then we feel bummed. <laughs> but yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it's really all about us wanting to reach the standard of love that source has for us. And that's what we're always striving for. We're striving to love ourselves to the degree that source loves us because source is actually us. <laughs> so it's and, like, wow. And, and another way to look at the same thing is also us trying to raise our standard of success, our standard of, of what we want within our, our physical side so that the, the physical and the non-physical are matching because when they match, that's when we feel the best. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we're, when we're, we're able to focus on that more than others are. Let's put it that way. When when we focus on ourselves, it's really up to us how long we're going to do that. If we're relying on somebody else to focus on us, that's that's a lot more dicey. Because, like you said, they they have their own needs too, right? And their own interests and their own things that they're focusing on. So, a lot of the time, if we're waiting for others to focus on us, we're going to be kind of hungry for the mm-hmm. energy, for the love, for the feeling good. Whereas when we're doing it ourselves. We are really empowering ourselves. We are giving ourselves the power that we need to always feel good. And mm-hmm. that's why that's always where, where you want to start. When, when, when you want to feel good all the time, when you want to feel happy and joyful and just have a really happy, joyful life, it has to start inside. It can't depend upon, you know, your lover or your best friend or your parent or whatever, because they just can't Literally, I mean, there's, there's, there's really just no good way for them to constantly love you without harming themselves. They need to give themselves love, which means they can't be focusing on you at the same time. I mean, we, we're able to focus on one thing. We can't focus on more than one thing. We can do one thing at a time. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, so yeah. when, when you brought this topic <laughs> up, one of the things that occurred to me is that the whole thing is based on what it is we're trying to attract, right? Because this is the law of attraction show, right? So yeah. when we're trying to attract, isn't it, first of all, isn't it, isn't it amazing that the very first thing we forget to do when we attract is to focus on feeling good inside? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true, isn't it? Isn't that the first well, thing that goes out the window? <laughs> like, focus on yeah, yourself? well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We get so externally focused and we, we, like, well, the name of the game with almost the entire Abraham, everything, every every segment they ever do with somebody sitting in the chair asking a question is based on that premise that there, there's so much looking that we're going to be happy when we finally have what we want. And, um, and what they're always saying is, is that we want you to not even – almost like not even care about getting the manifestation, even though it, the manifestation matters and it's really good and important that you get it and it feels fantastic that you get that lover and you get that money and you get that new house and you get that new car, whatever it is you want. But if you're not, as said so many times, if you're not enjoying the journey to get there, you can't even get there. You know, it's like, one vibration is going to lead to the next vibration, to the next vibration, thought by thought, memory by memory, conversation by conversation. Um, we will end up eventually to, you know, or quickly or slowly, however it is with our vibration, to have the things we want. But they don't, what well, they don't come without a joyful journey. So the whole thing is flowing that love through us. And that's what self love is when you feel that love flowing through you then you feel that you are that love it's not you know you're not trying to love some abstract self inside there you are you are the love itself flowing through you and that's what gives us all that satisfaction and before long the things that we want in our life like we want that lover that lover is going to show up because we're vibrating with that love you know mm-hmm. they, abraham was saying they can't not show up just like the money cannot sh- not show up if you're vibrating with feeling re- really good. If you just keep getting better, better at feeling good, the things that you want in your life will show up. But they said, but you can't be focused on the end product, you know, saying, well, I'll love myself enough and I'll finally get that love or I'll love myself enough and I'll finally get that money. But it's like that. That focus doesn't even work. It's almost like there's a little bit of a rabbit hole there because 
you've got to just be so much enjoying the journey, not trying to get somewhere. And you will get to where you want to get to, but you, you've got to be enjoying the journey. I don't know. So when we're talking about how important it is to focus within like that, I think probably one of the things we should talk about is strategies. Because mm-hmm. very often, I mean, let's let's be perfectly straight about it. When we're feeling good, we're already connected, so we don't have to think about it anyway, right? That's not the hard time. The hard time mm-hmm. is when we're not feeling so great. And right. that's the reminder that uh, that's what the emotions are telling us. That's the reminder that we need to get more into the self love thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all well and good. But if you're in a bad place, mm-hmm. especially if it's a really bad place, getting into that, that high flying happiness joy place is, is a pretty big <laughs> step. I mean, that's why Abraham teaches doing it incrementally. But more than that, it's a question of where do you start? When, yeah. you, when you're feeling bad and, and it feels like the world is against you and it feels like nothing you're doing is, is going to make any difference. You, you get that defeated, overpowered attitude and you know, overpowered belief system, you know, just running <laughs> rampant through your mind. What's your strategy? You know, you got to come up with a strategy if you're going to climb out of that. Yet very often that's where we, we stumble first. We got to have a strategy. What's the strategy? Yeah, I came up with a lot of strategies when I was going through this period um, about four years ago of going from extreme, what I realized eventually was extreme self-hate, you know, almost like extreme <laughs> um, not appreciating myself, really, and being down on myself and critical of myself a lot. I never knew how much I was that way until I, I, you know, reached sort of my rope's end after my divorce and all these different things that happened to me that brought me to a really low point in my life, but so I came up with a number of things. I w- it was curious when I was listening to this thing of Abraham. They were saying, um, they were saying, listen, friend, we don't want it to be this way. It shouldn't be this way. But for most of you, the hardest focal point on the planet for you to love is that one you see reflected back in the mirror. Mm. So we suggest you go home today and sit before a mirror and look into the depths of your eyes and look with the intention of seeing your inner being looking back at you and say, I know you're in there. And I have an inkling of how you feel about me because Abraham's been talking about And I'm just going to look for you till I find you. I'm going to stay here till I find that feeling of awareness of me and appreciation of me that I'm looking for. And, uh, lots of, lots of different, um, therapies and things recommend that you do an exercise in front of a mirror. So that is something that you can do is just look into your own eyes and get used to looking at oneself. This is what I, I practice this. I still do it sometimes when I'm feeling like I need it. It's like, even if I'm just passing a mirror, I'll say, I love you. I'll look at me and I'll look into my eyes and say, I love you and I accept you exactly the way you are. You know, I love you and I accept you exactly the way you are. And I'll look for that inner being like Abraham says. And another thing that you can say is I'm unconditionally worthy no matter what. You know, I, I mean, Except that that's something I had to accept. It's just like I decided to totally accept that no matter what, I am unconditionally worthy and I unconditionally love myself. And I realized that there is nobody else ever inside my body who can love me unless I choose to love me. I mean, I'm the only one that's ever going to be inside this body. Very and true. if I, if I can't love myself, then I'm missing the foundation of everything about my life. And therefore that became a choice, you know, that I would make every day. You know, my dominant intention today is to feel good no matter what. I, I choose that I am worthy no matter what. And I choose to love myself totally. There is no love that I'm going to withhold from myself. I'm my best friend. I've got my back. And that helped me a lot. I mean, it was a choice. I just kept making it day after day after day. And I still make that choice every day. You know, it's like I, I don't have to tell myself it as much as I used to. But um, one thing I used to say is that I'm is that if I felt it was I was having a great difficult time, I would say I'm changing as fast as the slowest part of me can change. And that's good enough. You know, <laughs> so right. if if I'm stuck and it seems like it's really hard to get to some place I'm trying to get to in my life, I'm just going to accept that the slowest part of me that I totally love it. And this one psychologist friend of mine, a really good friend, he said, he said, one thing he learned to do is he makes a big bonfire. He imagines a big bonfire and he's out in the woods 
And he sits at that fire and he invites every part of who he is to come and sit at the fire with him. There is no part of him that is not welcome at his fire. You know, sort of like, you know, you can come into my home no matter which part of me is it. And so I, I would imagine these big monsters coming out of the dark woods around <laughs> and they sit, you know, on the log next, you know, across from the guy. And it's a huge, hideous monster with like his self hate or his, the way he feels about himself sometimes. But you know what? He's, he's determined to love every part of himself. So it's like, it's that acceptance of everything about us that's so fundamental, I think. We've got to just accept that all the things we feel are okay, you know, oh, and yeah. all the things that we think they're okay, that we're never in the wrong place on our path. That's one thing Abraham says. We, we are never not exactly where we're supposed to be on our path. And when we just relax and accept that fact, and then we go forward from there, you know, doing the best we can. It's reassuring, too, knowing that we're never off the path, because certainly we've had plenty of uh, spiritual teachers tell us, well, you, you are off the path. That's your problem. you got to get back on the path. Well, you can't get off the path. You're on it. <laughs> so welcome to it. Um, yeah. The, the what do you do? Of, what do you do to bring love alive of self-love? Well, the, the thing that you were talking about, the, the loving yourself in the mirror, Cindy and I talked about that a couple days ago, and that can actually be a very uncomfortable activity. A lot yeah, of us, I know. you know, have trouble I looking know. in that mirror, right? Yeah. So, you know, you do it as much as you can do it, but you don't have to stop there. Because one nice thing, there is actually one really good thing about being outward focused. I mean, we are outward focused people. We focus outward all the time, right? And we blame uh -huh. things outside and, you know, we, we always uh, make ourselves powerless in the process. But there is a benefit. The benefit is you can also look out where four ways to feel good through your own activities, through things that you choose to do. So... You, you can look at nature, right? You can get mm -hmm. into the nature walk. You, you can uh, get involved in something that's uh, got some sort of exercise. You can, you can get involved in social activities. You can do anything that you enjoy doing that makes you feel good. I mean, if you're a skier, you can go skiing, right? If you're an ice yeah. skater, you can go ice skating. If, if you're a dancer, yeah. you can go dancing. It doesn't matter what it is. The point is there are a lot of outward-focused activities we can do that help us feel good. And, and really all that they're doing is they are engaging us in something that we've enjoyed in the past, so we let our guard down, which is really all we need to do. We just need to let the guard down. It's not like we don't really love each other, or love ourselves, rather. It's not like we don't love ourselves. We do love ourselves, I think. I think the vast majority of us regularly love ourselves and just feel, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a good person. That's fine. I mean, there are going to be some exceptions, obviously. There always are, but I think it's by and large what the case is. It's just that we don't allow ourselves to see it. We don't let it out and we don't let it in, right? We want to block yeah. it for, for, for various reasons. Most often because we got, you know, beaten down or something like that. So, you know, we're protective. We're a little protective of ourselves. But when we're doing something fun, we let the guard down. And when mm -hmm. we let the guard down, that's when all the self-love comes flowing through. So outward activities can be useful. You just have to be selective about, you know, which ones you, you engage in. Yeah, I find that every point, every... Every client and every client who's come to work with me, the name of the entire game of every single session is really self-love. Uh, it's sort of like when I was getting trained in coaching, they said it is the heavy lifting of coaching, you know, and of psychotherapy. I mean, everything that it involves a person shifting and changing in, in the direction of the having a the life they want begins and ends with self-love. And so all the things that we're really doing and every, all, all the things I'm really doing with the client in every session, they're almost like a, a finessing of self-love with that particular person. Like how do they, what do they need to do in their life to get to the point that they're so much taking care of themselves, so much self-care is going on that they are learning thought by thought, moment by moment, conversation by conversation, like I was saying, they're learning to be good at having fun, at being easy, at relaxing, at um, taking care of themselves. So if that means taking a nap in the middle of the day, if that means doing meditation, if that means, you know, going out and seeking out better friends in their life, if it means reading more of the books they would prefer to read, if it means playing their musical instrument, like you were saying. I mean, there are so many things that if if a person was to ask themselves, okay, what could I do today that would 
make me, that would help me feel good, that would lead me more in the direction of having the life that I want, of having more fun, of having better friendships, of having a better relationship with my partner, of having a partner, of having them that I want, what would I do that would be loving to myself that would take me down the path to allow myself to have a good feeling day. You know, if you have a good feeling day, then you're closer towards having the things you want in your life and you're understanding what life really is, which is to have fun, which is to be in that enjoyment as much as we can. So, yeah, it's all about every little thing we do and every little thought we have. You know, it's like how how are we really loving ourselves in the, our choices? You also used a great word there, um, the words, actually a hyphenated word, self-care. Self-care can actually take two really different forms. One form is the protective self-care, which is important. You have to make sure you have good boundaries and so forth. But the protective self-care is where we can become overprotective. Mm -hmm. So when we're in that overprotective self-care mode, that's actually when we kind of, in a sense, cut ourselves off from our own inner being because mm-hmm. we're, we're so protecting that inner being that we block it entirely. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and it's never actually blocked, but we're, we're, this is where our resistance goes up and the resistance is what prevents us from, feel, from feeling good. So we, we put this resistance up to protect ourselves and end up feeling rotten in the process. That's one form of self-care. The other form of self-care is a more conscious one and a conscientious one as well. It is one where I am, my form of self-care is going to take the, take on the aspect of allowing that flow to happen with my inner being. Cause when that flow happens, it happens when I'm feeling good. So get myself feeling good. That flow will happen. And now I'm giving myself a different kind of self care. This is the kind of self care where I'm, I'm allowing myself to feed myself the energy I need, the, the, the feel good energy, the energy that, that keeps me going, keeps me excited and enthusiastic about life. So mm-hmm. it's a different kind of self care. And, and I, as you were using that word, I realized we need to remember there are two different kinds and, and that we need to differentiate them. Hmm. One kind is the kind that we use when we're just protecting ourselves. You know, the, 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 the attack is imminent, imminent and we got to do something to protect ourselves. Well, that's, you know, perfectly reasonable. You, you have to protect yourself, mm-hmm. but you don't have to stay in that space. You don't have to yeah. be permanently protected. You can actually open up again. And, and once you've opened up, then you can let the energy flow again. And when the energy flows again, all the good stuff starts to happen again. Two different kinds of self-care. Yeah, that's interesting. That's true. Um, reminds me of that thing that um, Abraham was saying that what does it mean to follow your path of least resistance and most allowing, you know, because they say 100% of our job here is to be receptive to our own well-being. And sometimes, you know, well-being is protective and sometimes well-being is, um, is expressive. Like, I was thinking of, you know, if you're in a job that you feel it's kind of a dead end job and you hate going to that job every day. Um, but what is the path of least resistance? And some would say, well, it's to quit the job. And well, that could be the path of least resistance at a certain point. But if you need that income and this is the job you have today, well, then the path of least resistance today is to go to the job and get, get the money that you need. But then you can ask yourself, could I go to the job today and maybe find a way to have a better time? You know, could I, could I look for things that I could flow a little bit easier with let the, let, let the, that good energy flow through me, um, maybe towards expressing myself in a different way in my environment, in my work environment, where I, I'm more receptive to things that I appreciate or things that fascinate me or things that interest me, or, you know, so you can feel better feelings. So following the path of least resistance is one way we practice self-love. But sometimes it's a, it's like for me going to comedy improv and stepping out on the stage, not knowing what I'm going to do in a scene is threatening to me, just like going and giving a public speech is threatening to me, but it's, it's self-love because it's giving me a chance to move beyond my comfort zone and to move out of, you know, that place where I could, I could stay in comfort zones pretty easily. I could stay in my condo all day long, you know, and 
and just do things that are always really simple and easy, simple and easy, simple and easy. But that's not how I really want to live my life. I, I love simple and easy, but I also love to be self-expressed. And so sometimes to be self-expressed, I've got to move out of my comfort zone and go do something that is feels a bit challenging. But but there's a certain reward of self-love in that too, right? Absolutely true. Oh, yeah. In fact, the whole idea about um, whether or not you stay in a job that you don't like, it, it, it raises another aspect of the self-care question. Because you can argue on the one hand that you need the income, and so it is a form of self-care to stay in the job and find a way to like the job and, and find good things. If you can't like the job, at least find other things within the job that you enjoy, that you can focus on. And then the flip side of that is the idea, well, you can also look at it that you're, maybe you're better off not being in that job. Maybe you need a better job or maybe you need to be self-employed or you know, maybe there's an alternative you need to look at that you haven't been looking at. And again, it comes down to it being a different kind of self-care. It's all self-care. It's just different kinds. And, mm -hmm. you know, in the process of trying to figure out what one's own particular strategy is going to be, what we're really trying to figure out is what's the balance between the protective self-care and the opening up self-care that I need in my life? Because mm -hmm. we all have a different way of measuring that, I think. Um, I think it, it shows up in terms of how many people or actually how few people end up being entrepreneurial. That number has actually increased, particularly since the internet was invented. But even there, the majority of people don't get entrepreneurial. The majority of people uh, stay in the work world. So, you know, you, you just have two different ways of looking at it. There are just some people who don't feel comfortable taking the risks that are involved in entrepreneurship. Clearly, that kind of person is going to feel safer and feel more opportunities to feel good when they're working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are all the factors we need to take into account when we're trying to figure out what's the best way to love me. And it has a lot to do with self-knowledge and learning about yourself. And in many ways, you know, especially if we're in a bad place, we have a lot to learn about ourselves, stuff that we've forgotten and stuff that we never paid attention to in the first place. You know, yeah. so, so there's a lot of learning to be done there. But that, that I think is where the journey comes in. The journey is about learning about yourself. Mm, and totally. it's about learning what your choices are and learning what your, what your preferences are, what you like and what you don't like. Um, it's also the journey is, is recognizing that you have a choice of where you're going to spend most of your time. Are you going to spend most of your time in the positive or in the negative? So often we spend so much time in the negative. I was, I even made a little comment on Facebook today. I, I posted something to the effect that do you, do you ever notice that somebody who is habitually routinely sarcastic is a person who is also routinely not getting what they want out of life? Mm, that's probably true. Yeah. You know? If you just watch somebody who's, who, you know, they're, they're usually being sarcastic in a way that, well, sometimes they're just obviously just expressing anger, but, um, often they're expressing sarcasm as a way to be funny, right? To, to amuse others and so forth. And yet, if you watch closely, the person who is usually sarcastic finds that their lives are less than satisfying. And I think it's because sarcasm focuses so much, so heavily on the negative. So it comes down to that balance again. How much, I mean, you have to focus some on negativity. You just can't avoid that. That's just part of being alive because we are in a realm of contrast. Mm -hmm. And we are in that realm so we can pick, this is what I want, this is what I don't want. If you don't have something negative there, you can't say, I don't want it. <laughs> it's got, I mean, with, without that kind of contrast, there's no way to say, I don't want something. Mm -hmm. You have to have some way to differentiate. That's why we have contrast. Mm. You know, one thing that is good with self-love is, and this has been a big one for me, is um, not being into things being either or or black black or white. You know, that um, we get, in contrast, you know, one thing that makes me feel troubled, has made me feel troubled, is because I think it's, I've thought so much that things are either or. You know, like, well, I'm either, I don't know what's a good example, I'm, I'm either going to be in the, in the right relationship with somebody I really want to be in the right relationship with, or I'm going to be 
um, facing loneliness, you know, instead of feeling like, well, there's all the gray. (laughs) Yeah, that's black and white. It's like, but there's all this gray zone in between where, well, I could have, I can have some friendships or I could have, I could date and have good times with a woman for a while and then I move on when I know that it's not the right relationship or she moves on when she knows it's not the right relationship. Mm -hmm. But, but, but the gray zone is look at all the fun I could have while I'm dating. It doesn't have to be like, Oh, this is a, this is so screwed up because I go out and I never meet the right person. And when am I going to meet her? And when am I going to finally have the love I need to get in my life from, you know, another person and, all that is like black or white thinking. You know, there's, there's all kinds of fun and enjoyment to be had, say, in the process of dating and just making it a, a journey, making it a fun play. And that's seeing the gray in things. You know, yeah, she might not be the ideal woman that I'm going to end up spending the rest of my life with, but what, look at how much fun I could have just hanging out with her and doing some fun things together and not being so much expecting this end result to always be perfect. Enjoy what's, what's showing up in my life, you know, enjoy what I'm attracting now into my life. Um, can do that in every area of our lives, you know, like be easy on ourselves. Look mm-hmm. at, look at each thing that's happening and go, how could I just be with this thing in an easy way, in a way that feels good? Like I used to get down on myself because I had clutter in my house. And then I would look at it so many times over the years and I'd, you know, and I'd get rid of clutter and stuff, but then I'd go, why don't I just make peace with this? Just whatever it is, is whatever it is. And I must be doing it for some reason. So wherever I am on my path with clutter, I'm just going to make peace with it. I, I am not going to fight it. I'm not going to like say that I'm not good enough because I don't have what I want in my life. What I have in my life is what I have. That's a big part of coaching is helping a client accept what is and then going forward from there, but loving what is, you know, like if I have symptoms in my body of some kind of disease, some kind of a problem with my body, can I love myself with that thing and then move forward from there? You know, instead of fighting the thing, you know, instead of just always feeling at odds with it. Oh, I'm so upset that I have this symptom in my body and this freaks me out so much. (laughs) How how can I somehow embrace it and then, you know, actually flow some love towards it? You know, like like that thing of accepting it at my fire, you know, hey, uh, that's what I've got and I want to flow with it and and then know that. The thing will dissipate. Things will dissipate once we accept them, I think. Once we really embrace things with love, they can dissipate. It's funny, too, because you also mentioned uh, between black and white, there's gray, which is certainly the way the metaphor is usually portrayed, right? There's black yeah. and white, but there's also the gray area. Uh-huh. But it occurs to me, gray is not the only thing in between black and white. There's also <laughs> blue and red and yellow oh, that's and true. green and indigo and turquoise. I mean, they're all between black and white. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good one. I haven't heard that before. I you like know, when it. you think, when you think about it, you know, it, 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 I think that's one reason why people get so worked up about, you know, staying on, on the white side because we, we figure, well, gray is like, ugh, it's just gray. I mean, it's not black, but it's gray, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, I don't. I, I always thought, yeah, well, who likes gray? Yeah. <laughs> but actually, that's where all the good stuff happens because that's also where the colors are. And that's where all the mm-hmm. sounds are. That's where all mm-hmm. the textures are. They're in between. It's not just in a between pure the extremes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just pure extreme one way or the other. It's, it, that's all the good stuff is in, is in between. And, and we know that, in fact, from what Abraham has taught us about the nature of emotion. Emotion, right? That emotion is the thing that we experience when our inner being and our physical being are either in alignment with each other or out of alignment with each other. When they're in alignment, we feel good, positive feelings. When they're out of alignment, we feel bad feelings. Well, there are also various textures to it. We have different names for positive feelings, different names for negative feelings. There, there are lots of different textures, lots of different flavors of it. Well, that also implies that we can pick and choose which ones we're going to focus on. We're not limited to just black and white. <laughs> we actually yeah. have a whole range of emotions that we can pick from, and we yeah. can enjoy the whole range. I mean, I'm not saying I want to enjoy depression. Don't get me wrong. I want to stay 
neutral and up as much as I possibly can and preferably uh-huh. up, you know, <laughs> uh-huh, but, uh-huh. but just because I want to stay up doesn't mean that I want to be happy 100% all the time with no variation. Cause that would get dull. Yeah. That would get really boring. <laughs> it would over time. It's like, you know, it, it's like if you've ever been to the Caribbean or any tropical area for vacation, right? And you're there for a week and you say, Oh God, I could just live here forever. <laughs> and then, then you're there for another week and you're like, Oh, this is just yeah, wonderful. But yeah, then you start yeah, thinking yeah. about it saying, nothing ever changes. It's yeah. always the same temperature. It's always the beautiful weather. You can see over time where you just kind of stop living because, <laughs> okay, well, I've got everything. I'm done. Yeah. Well, it's got its own, it's got its own subtle amazingness when you're in those environments, of course, but I know what you're saying. And, um, I, I, I was just thinking something about that that I wanted to say, but then I lost it. Well, that's all right. I mean, I, uh, just to finish my point off. Yeah. We can, we can love living in the Caribbean. I mean, there are people who live in the Caribbean. They love it there. They enjoy it. They live for it. In fact, um, my sister-in-law, Yona, is from Trinidad and her mm-hmm. parents came to have, have come to the States a couple of times to visit her, particularly since, uh, she and my brother hooked up. And there was one time when her parents were with them while they were living in Dayton, Ohio. And her father, who loved to go running every day, tried to go running in like 20 degree temperature wearing a running suit, which was not really the smartest thing to do. But when you're from the Caribbean, you don't know any better. He, <laughs> he, he, he got over, he got exposure. He was suffering from, from severe exposure all, all oh from doing God. that. Now, so <laughs> when, when, when you think about his perspective, he loves the Caribbean. He can go running every day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I suspect that when, even when you're in the Caribbean, there are variations. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. it's not like where, you know, here in the U.S., there are no variations between winter and summer. There are variations. They're very big ones. You know, the variations yeah. in the Caribbean are going to be smaller, but the variations are still there. So that's how you can actually enjoy living in a place like that. So when, when I put my example out there, I didn't mean to imply you wouldn't want to live in the Caribbean all the time. Actually, but probably would enjoy living there all the time. But by the <laughs> same token, I wouldn't want to just fall into, oh, I need the perfect weather every day at the same temperature with the same water and all, because that would get boring. Yeah. Well, when I think about the, the point I was going to make that I forgot before, I was going to say that as the age that I am, you know, so many of my friends are now retiring and they've worked their whole life to, you know, be able to retire which is fine. And yet, you know, like now I look at the choices they're making and what they're going to do now, you know, which are kind of the traditional things, you know, where you can play a bunch of golf and you can uh, go to the Caribbean, (laughs) you can go to Mexico, you can, um, you know, so many different things, but they kind of like retirement activities. And I always thought over all the years that I didn't want to reach this age and really be in that headspace. I wanted to be, always feeling like I was on an exciting adventure of self-discovery. So that's, you know, in here I am, I'm being a coach in my late sixties and I'm, I'm, you know, excited to be a coach throughout my seventies. And I, I feel like what I love doing is interacting with people. I love being into the process of self-discovery with myself and others. That's one of the things that really turns me on. And when I picture not doing that or not being involved with people in a way like that and just being on some island in the Caribbean walking the beach, I really do picture that I would get bored, just like you say, that, you know, I'd get to the point where I would really want more interaction with people in a more um, meaningful way to me, you know, where I felt like this is, it's more than just sitting around in a bar, having a nice drink and then, you know, going for another walk on the beach or, you know, taking the boat out. I mean, there's a lot of fun things. I'm sure I could, I could probably totally get into it, but, uh, but I, I like the idea of being in, you know, interaction with people where I'm always pushing the edge of my own self growth and I'm, I'm in environments that challenge me or, or give me the opportunity to discover myself in new ways all the time. So I was just in a way agreeing with you that. Yeah. You know, oh, absolutely. I mean, life is a buffet, really. You, mm-hmm. you don't want you don't want buffet you don't want the 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 life meal to be one meal only 
<laughs> Always right. the same meal. <laughs> it's right, a buffet. Right. It's it, you want the the variety. You want the different flavors. You want the different foods. It's better that way. It's more interesting. It makes you look forward to the next meal or the next activity or the next job or the next relationship or the next house. It's the, the variety is is the spice of life. That's what the the cliche says. Well, it's true. Variety is the spice of life. That's where it all gets fun. Opportunities for self expansion to me are go hand in hand with self love. Um, because, because if I can be on the adventure of being here in this world in a way that is fulfilling in my heart of hearts, you know, that it feels like to my soul that I'm, I'm taking care of myself in a way that maybe when I made the agreement to come here to this planet, you know, that I, that I really, you know, said I want to be fully immersed in the possibilities when I'm there. I don't just want to be hanging out, um, thinking that this is as good as it gets, you know. Um, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to put down somebody who's totally loves golf and they feel that golf's as good as it gets or they totally love watching basketball and that's as good as it gets. Cause, you know, I don't, I'm, I don't know what that's like for them. I, I, I've had great experiences watching basketball and watching football and stuff. So I know, and, and playing those sports. So I know there's just satisfaction all over the place. So, but it's so individual, isn't it? I mean, each one of us, I think that's what self love is hugely about is each one of us deciding, you know, what we want to pursue in our lives that'll, that'll bring about, that'll allow us to unfold the best life we could possibly live. You know, that's what it comes down to for me. So if it involves particular friends, if it involves children, if it involves my, pet, my animals, it involves nature, it involves whatever turns us on, you know, helping others, doing volunteer activities, um, making a ton of money, you know, driving fast cars. I mean, whatever turns us on, just that we sort of allow ourselves to explore and expand our possibilities. That seems to be a lot of self-love right there. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. And, and with that in mind, getting back to the whole concept of what do you do to get yourself going, so to speak, to, to climb out of the rut when you're in a rut, when you're in that depressed state or you know, things don't seem to be working out and, and you're just, you, you have this highly protective golden dome around yourself so that you really can't get it. Yourself can't get to you. You can't really get to your inner self. And, and so you're kind of cut off. Well, variety, looking at the variety. Mm-hmm. When when yeah. when you take the time to look at the variety that's available to you, and ask yourself, "What do I like? Mm-hmm. What do I like?" That's that for me is how you step out. Because I mean, there are whole formulas on this. Abraham has their own formula, right? The incremental formula, climbing up the emotional set point scale. There are whole ranges of formulas. Different gurus have their own formulas. But ultimately, I think the best formula of all is simply to start with, "What do you like?" Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because if you've been in that depressed state or you've been in that I can't get a relationship state or I'm, I'm impoverished state or I'm I'm a, a sick person state or whatever, when, when you get there, w- the main reason you can't get out is because you've been thinking all this time that I am sick, I have no relationship, I am impoverished, I have all these bad things going on. And mm-hmm. we can actually get to the point where we forget that there are other things out there. That's my point. We can, we forget that the variety is out there. We have to remind ourselves of that variety. It's the reminding ourselves of the good stuff. And it takes time. It takes a little time to say, okay, so let's see. What is it that I really do like? What do I enjoy? Mm-hmm. And then the moment that we've come up with something that we enjoy, find out a way to do it and to do it regularly. Because the first thing that tends to happen, particularly with depressed people, is they come up with some reason that they like to do something – and then once they've come up with it, they're done. Now we can go back to complaining about how depressed I am. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that stands between us and having the lives we want, I mean, the main thing is our belief that we can't have the lives we want. You know, the like Abraham was saying, the thing that stands between you and having – one of the things that stands between you and self-love is that you are wondering – so much how to have self love. And they said that wondering that, that thinking about how am I going to love myself more stands between you and having the self love because self love is a flowing of love. So what you're talking about in a way is how do we get into fl- a flow that feels good in our lives? Like 
flowing from one activity to another, flowing from one friendship to another, flowing from one good meal to the next good meal. I mean, flowing from one good piece of music to the next good piece of music. It's like, how can we, how can we give ourselves permission to feel good? I mean, I find that's my biggest challenge in life still is giving myself full permission to have a good feeling life and that always asking myself, what do I really want to be doing in this particular moment? You know, that feels good. And, and, and like you say, it's, it's not a muscle that I've developed enough in my life is the muscle of having fun. I, as a kid, I, I was fully into it, but as an adult, I learned ever since the age 20 on, you know, in a sense, I learned to play more this game of conforming to society's expectations, you know, and so I'm comparing myself to others, what they have, what I, what I have, and not really just looking at, like you say, what do I enjoy? What's fun for me? What feels good? What would I like to be doing? And, and I feel like that's something I'm going to spend the rest of my life getting better and better at letting myself do fun things and have what I want, you know? Mm-hmm. Cindy yeah. was saying in an interview I heard with her uh, the day before yesterday, Cindy Chavez, an- another one of the co-hosts on the podcast, was saying that her- with her clients, because she's a life coach, she was saying that's probably the biggest thing, one of the biggest things she works with clients on is asking them, well, what do you want in your life? And they just so many times don't know what they want. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I want, you know, and so that's a good place to put focus. You know, what do you enjoy? What turns you on? What's fun for you? And what do you want to have more of as you go forward in your life? How would you like it to unfold? And a particularly important point for somebody who is studying this stuff because they want to learn how to apply the law of attraction is you don't want to try to come up with something that you want for the purpose of attracting it. You want to put up with the, the thing that you, that you love to come up with the thing that you love, to focus <laughs> on it, to find to it enjoy and enjoy it. it and go have fun with it. Yeah. it. It's like what Neil Donald Walsh said in, in the movie The Secret. He says, if you enjoy having a salami sandwich, then have a salami sandwich. You know, mm-hmm. if you, if, if you enjoy going for a walk in the park, go for a walk in the park. Don't just think about it. it. It's like what happens with somebody who's in a bad place and they watch a comedy, right? And mm-hmm. they'll tell you afterward it was funny, but they never laughed. Mm. They didn't allow themselves to engage in enjoying the comedy. They watched it. They observed it, but they didn't engage in it. Mm. And the same thing is true with other things in the life of a person who's in a bad place. They don't allow themselves to engage in the good stuff. You got to engage. That's how you get feeling better. And, mm-hmm. oh, by the way, you're worried about the, the the attracting part of law of attraction. Well, when you get into the good feeling place, that's when you start attracting. So if that's what your real goal is, if, you're, if your goal is, I just need to, I want to attract that new house. I want to attract that new computer. I want to attract that new job. I want to attract that, that new mate. I want to attract that healthy body. I want to attract whatever it is. Well, enjoy it first. <laughs> Yeah. You know, get yourself to enjoy it. Go out there and have fun with it. And, and, you know, do whatever it takes to really appreciate, enjoy, and have fun and, and be great with it because then you'll attract it. Yeah. But if all you do is you focus on observing it, yep, I am observing that I want a job. Yep, I'm observing that I want a relationship. Yep, I'm mm-hmm. observing that I want a healthier body. You're not doing yourself any favors. <laughs> You're just not. Yeah, and, you know, we need to be incredibly patient with ourselves and loving with ourselves in the process of getting there because if we don't feel those things that's just because we've had a history or maybe even our ancestors had a history of not knowing how to enjoy certain aspects of life you know they got too focused on the fact that life's a struggle and it takes a whole lot of hard work and that the only way to get what you want is by paying a really stiff price and suffering is the way that you earn what you get in life and Those have been strong paradigms, strong belief systems. And so that's why we've got to be really loving with ourselves as we're looking for how to have more fun and how to have more enjoyment that, well, it's one day at a time. It it might take a while to learn to have fun, but that's okay because wherever you are on your path is completely where you are and it's totally cool. It's totally fine because 
I, I, there was this really cool thing that Abraham was saying that you, one, they said, they said, here's, here's a, here's a really good thing to your, to say to yourself. Even though for whatever reason, I don't like myself very much right now, I know that I have not caused sourced, source to deviate in source's appreciation of me at all. I have not convinced source not to like me. So if you're ever feeling that you don't love yourself enough and you're not having enough fun in your life and you don't know to have how to have fun in your life and you don't know what you want in your life and you're having a hard time getting to what you want in your life, know that your source self is completely appreciates you 100% no matter what and that they'll, you know, that you'll never get source to stop liking you. So, we learn to like ourselves a day at a time, you know. That's true. I, but as you, yet, were, as you were talking there, I wrote something down, and I just found myself like forming it as I was writing it. I wrote down, mm-hmm. "Happiness is participation." I want mm-hmm. to participate. Mm-hmm. That, that's my affirmation for the day. Happiness is participation. I want to participate. I like it. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much that like. Um, getting somebody to come out of themselves just a little bit can really open their eyes to amazing things, you know, just be, just beginning to do something different. It's this an NLP. We talked about this last podcast. It's a pattern interrupt when they interrupt the way things have been by doing something really different. Like I'm, I'm trying this thing where I get up at four in the morning or five in the morning, four or five, because I want to interrupt the pattern of sleep that I've been used to because it's so easy for me to sleep eight or nine hours at a time. And I was hearing this thing from Seth, you know, which is another channeled entity where they were saying, that's really not the best way to live. It's actually better to sleep about five hours and then, you know, get up at the most inspirational time of the morning, which is around four or 5 a.m., and then later take a nap because you will actually find yourself connecting to your source self in amazing ways when you interrupt that, usual pattern of thinking that you rely on your entire daytime for all your inspiration. They said, that's not normal. They said, it's better to get inspiration in short bursts and that's that. And then take a, take a break, take a nap. You know, I don't know. I, I'm just trying different things because it feels good to interrupt my pattern so that I can be open to more creative things happening in my, in my life. You know, regarding sleep, I, I've kind of been on both sides of that fence in various times in my life. Right now, I'm on the side of my fence where I just want as much sleep as I can get. And yeah. I've, been, I've been in there for quite some time. But I've also been on, on the other side of it where, you know, life's ready to be lived. You know, I don't want to be sleeping my day away. And mm-hmm. I'm beginning to realize that probably my best play is to sleep until I feel like I, I'm ready to wake up. And the way I know that I'm ready to wake up is because... I woke up because what I tend to do is my, my tendency is to sleep like a good five or six hours, sometimes six and a half and then wake up and then look at the clock and say, Oh, I got another couple hours and mm-hmm. then go back and try to sleep. And sometimes I sleep and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm in that in between space and I'm realizing, you know what? If I just woke up when I, if I just got up when I woke up and not worry about it one way or another, just, you know, okay, I woke, that means I got some sleep, I'm, I'm in good shape, mm-hmm. and then go do my stuff, I bet you that's probably my optimum, whatever that is. And, it, it, and it's probably going to vary from day to day. That's the other thing. We are not schedules. People, mm-hmm. people are not schedules. We, we often live by schedules, but in our core being, we are not schedules. So why treat ourselves like schedules? If I need six hours today and seven hours tomorrow, then I need six hours today and seven hours tomorrow. It's that simple. That's right. That's right. You can definitely go and just be on that kind of varied schedule and find your inspiration in there. You know, find what inspires you, what feels good. You know, that's what I'm trying to follow. Does it really feel good to get up earlier and, and see and see what happens? Yeah, it's been very interesting for me. And if you live a scheduled life where you don't have that much flexibility, well, okay, but there are areas of your schedule where you do have flexibility, so use your flexibility there. You know, mm-hmm. maybe maybe sleep is not where you can be flexible, but you can be flexible in other areas. And uh, I'm just looking at the clock and I'm realizing we got about uh, 40 seconds and we got to go theme music in there. So, Tom, I think we're about done for the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. But it's been great. Thanks for doing it, and I'll be talking to you on Monday. Yeah, looking forward to it. So, All right. Well, I'm- I'm looking forward to it, too, and we hope that you'll all join us as well uh, later today as well here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. (laughs) 